trying to pack on 10 to 15 pounds of muscle in the next year? Watch this. Our first caller is Cade from Washington. What's up, Cade? How can we help you? Hey, so I just had a question regarding basically optimizing muscle growth. Because so for I've been consistently training for about 10 years with a goal of just health and longevity. Mm -hmm. But recently, I found myself in a really good spot. So I'm about 5'10" about 154, 155. So I'm like 10 ish percent body fat. And I just, I don't know, I got it in me that I kind of want to see if I can push my body to do something like a, uh, a physique competition. So I was trying to see what would be a checklist that I could do to basically optimize muscle growth over the course of one or two years to put on maybe like 15, 20 pounds. Okay. Well, this um, is definitely Justin's wheelhouse. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll go ahead and feel this one, you guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Relax. Okay. <laughs> Physique competitor. I think, I think there's a lot more we need to know, right? So I, I would like to know uh, kind of what you're currently doing training-wise. Are you following any sort of program regimen? Do you follow any of the MAPS programs currently right now? And if you don't... Yeah, so I have okay. uh, four of you guys' programs. I have anabolic performance aesthetic and power lift okay i'm just finishing up anabolic but i've kind of tweaked it to where i'm still working out it's not really trigger sessions i'm working out seven days a week basically where i'm kind of splitting some of the end of the workout because i don't really feel like i can give the like i'm in the third phase right now so like the superset with the the arm workouts i kind of push that off on its own day with maybe either a chest workout or a shoulder workout and then do some very light accessory stuff just to get a little bit more volume. Okay. So you're pretty much falling anabolic. You're just kind of splitting it up, which is totally cool. I do that sometimes where I split it up on the other days, um, but you're still following what's in the program. Um, yes. So the other question I'd have too is that if, you know, if you're a client of mine, I would love like a an off-season kind of bulking you know, stretch with you. And then we would do show prep and get ready. So if I could get like a year of your time, I would want to run like anabolic power lift, try to pack on as much muscle. And we'd do that in a bulk. So I'd at 10% body fat, you're already pretty lean. In fact, yeah. this is kind of like right when, when I was in season and off season, off season, I like to hover right around that 10. Maybe I'd let myself go as high as 12%, but I like mm -hmm. to keep myself close to to single digits getting ready for a show so I didn't have to do a long cut. So your body fat yep. percentage is perfect kind of where you're at. And I would love to run like a power lift, anabolic split type of routine within a calorie surplus to pack okay. on some good size for you. For, and I would want to do that for about three to six months, depending on uh, you know where our body fat is hanging around and stuff. And then mm -hmm switch you over to like a MAPS aesthetic and lean you out and get you ready for the show. And MAPS aesthetic was really inspired by kind of my show prep heading into a show. And and I would start it off still in like a calorie surplus or maintenance. And then towards the, you know, final six to eight weeks, I would transition into a cut. And when you're this lean, when you're right around 10%, um, you don't need to be cutting longer than about probably six weeks. I think that's the mistake that some of these competitors make is they, one, they allow their body fat percentage to get so high. And then when it's time to cut, they're doing like these 16 week cuts. I, I never cut longer than four to six weeks uh, because I maintain my body fat percentage about where you're at. If you're around 10%, you can easily drop four or 5% in six weeks. No problem. Especially if you got a, a healthy metabolism and you're, and you're dialed in. So that's kind of yeah. what I, I, I would want to do with you. Yeah. Um, to add to that, I'd say a big thing to focus on is going to be your your calories. Uh, obviously, you want to get a, about a gram of protein per pound of body weight, but you're, you should be increasing your calories by about 500 to 1,000 over what your maintenance is. So do you know what your maintenance calories are? Do you know how much you're eating right now? So actually, it's kind of... So I've been probably about three, four months now where I've been just like intuitively eating. I have a good idea that I'm around... Anywhere, I mean, it fluctuates, but I could be anywhere between like 27 to 3,000 calories. And I've actually been basically recomping for a couple months where I've consistently seen that I'm a little bit bigger and losing body fat at the same time. So, yeah, so uh, estimates are notoriously, 
inaccurate, even for experienced uh, people. I, I mean, I, I estimate, and when I go count and add things up, I find that I'm off by. Oh, that, that's me. That's me counting. Like, I, I have an idea of how much the food I eat is. I just didn't like actually write it down. Okay. All okay. right. Yeah, because that's uh, obviously that is a. Uh, I mean, that's the first step. So I'm, I'm glad yeah. Sal, you went that way. Is that you know, if we, you and I were working together, I would need you to know. Yeah. To the calorie, right? So, I, I mean, I encourage people right. using like Fat right. Secret or My Fitness Pal, so we can log it and we can make subtle adjustments. So, yeah, track it, and then once you get the exact number, I'd go. Actually, I'd probably go. Are you are you more of a? I'm assuming you're more of a hard gainer than an easy gainer, considering your your body weight and your height. Is that? Would you say that's fair? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, I would go a thousand calories over maintenance. Now, if you start to put on too much body fat, you could always bring it down to 500 over yep. maintenance. But I would add a thousand over what you're doing. And then, you know, go back to your training. The food is going to make the biggest difference. Obviously, if you're okay. following one of our programs, it's probably working all right for you, but it's going to be the food. That's the big challenge. And if you're eating close to 3,000 calories, I mean, we're talking close to 4,000 calories. That's that's a bit challenging for people to do consistently. What people tend to do is they'll do 4,000 calories for a few days, and then, you know, they'll drop off for another few days and actually totals out to be not that much of a, of a surplus. So consistently – a 1,000 calorie surplus per day, um, go with that. And then if your body fat starts to climb too quickly, you could cut that in half. But you got to be in that surplus to really pack on. You're, you're talking about 15 pounds of muscle. And to be yeah. honest with you, you've been working out for 10 years. 15 pounds yeah. of muscle in a one year after 10 years of training is going to be hard. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really hard. I, I would say more realistic would be closer to seven. But who knows? You I know, mean, at knows? the end of the day, I wouldn't get too hung up on the, that stuff anyways. Like, really, my goal with you is if we're going to do our first show and get ready for it, it's, okay, let's get your calories up um, as high as we can without putting on too much body fat, right? So, Because what I really want to do is I want to get you at a place where, you know, let's say you're, you say you're around 3,700 calories or so right now. We're, let's say we get you up to like 4,500 calories and it's like man i'm eating as much as i can and it's awesome i'm not putting on really body fat i'm hovering around this 10 to 12 percent we're in a really good place to to transition you into a cut because your calorie intake is so high i can peel you down 500 calories tell you to walk a thousand more steps a day and you're going to start to lean out real nice and that's where we'd like to be and the, the other thing i would add if you're not tracking this right now is to start to track your steps. Are you? Are you? Do you have any idea of like how much you move on a daily basis? Um, it's not that much. I mean, I go for a couple walks, and so honestly, that's the majority of it. Maybe like five, six thousand. Okay, cool. So that's. I definitely have room to be much more active. Yeah, that's, just that's a great. That's a great pl for so for what you're trying to do. That's a good place to be because that gives me a lot of room to increase your steps. And I wouldn't do that yet, right? Right now, we're we're, we're bulk phase, put on size, add the calorie. Sal saying uh, transition into one of the other programs that you finish anabolic. I was talking about try and bulk for the next program and get your calories up as high as you can, maintain your steps where they're at. And then when we switch into your cut, the first thing we're going to do is reduce your calories by about 500 calories and increase your steps by, say, just 2,000 steps a day Yeah, through walking. One other thing, too, is uh, a lot of people, especially if you're natural, so if you're not um, enhanced with any anabolics or anything like that, m most people gain more mass with about four days a week of resistance training, maybe five at the most. Even though you're taking the volume up and splitting it up, you might be better off reducing the overall volume, doing about four days a week, maybe in the gym. The other days you could stretch and do That's mobility work. That's a really good point. And you'll probably see yourself pack on more muscle. And I know it's hard to imagine, especially you've been working out so long, but you'll know within the first couple of weeks. You know, if you try that, go four days a week for the next couple of weeks, Focus on you know kind of getting stronger, bumping your calories. Um, you, my guess is, and I would bet put money on this that you're going to see a nice little bump in muscle and strength. How, how young are that. we? I don't, what's our age? Uh, I'm 28. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with Sal. Uh, and in fact, 28 is about <laughs> when when I started to piece this together. Uh, in my mid 20s and early 20s, I was seven day a week. It was about intensity and thinking. The more I trained, the more muscle I'd put on. I'll never forget switching to a three day a week program. And it was a hard transition because I was like, this just doesn't feel like I'm putting enough work in. But then my body started to pack on muscle and that's all I needed. I needed to actually lay off a bit um, and, and and just follow good programming and eat and recover. And I started, I started to see myself put on a lot more size after I'd already been training for over a decade. So 
you may be in a similar situation, been training as long as you have, you're still young, you probably you want to get after it. And honestly, scaling back a little bit and only training three times three times a week uh, may do you really well. So and then what's great about that, too, is that also leaves us a lot of room to add at, into your cut. Right. So just once, to burn calories. Yeah. So when we get into the cutting phase, it ain't about packing on any more muscle. It's about maintaining the muscle that you work so hard for and moving more and burning more. Uh, and I would that's I would use those extra days to get you more active and, and, and burning more calories when we get into our cut phase. Right on. All right. Um, so quick, do you have any like small checklist of things that you would do outside of like nutrition, sleep, and exercise to kind of try to optimize gains? Outside of sleep, exercise, and nutrition, I mean steroids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm being honest. What yeah, I would do well, this is if no. you're asking my personal, what I would be doing. Yeah. That's what I would be doing. Yeah, if you've never, yeah, I, I suggest you find you know, that on your own. Don't go that route, but it, but and if you do, it's going to be hard to come back from. But not, okay, so all joking aside, stress. Um, and then supplements can help. Creatine is going to be probably the most uh, beneficial yeah. supplement that you can take. And if you're not hitting your protein targets with your food, you could supplement with protein powder. But aside from what you just said, there's really not much else. Um, I mean, you could, I, to optimize. I mean, I assumed that, yeah, that's the cornerstone. And then just if there was any other like small little tidbits that maybe I could add. But yeah. Yeah, stress, I mean, pretty, ma manage yeah, stress. That's I mean, what, yeah, manage stress. Pay attention to what your, your, your stress levels and sleep looks like. If you're if you're uh, if you're not optimizing sleep, that's a that's one of those things that when you're in tw you're 20, you tend to overlook. Well, he I, included that. He said sleep, training, and nutrition. Yeah. Outside of outside of those, those I would the, say just stress. You know. Yeah. I can't think of anything. Yeah, else. The thing I'm sad about is actually um, through you guys, I I got an Uller unit, but it started leaking, so I had to send it away. So my sleep has been less restful lately. Oh, okay. But. Well, when you get it back, um, yeah. it'll make a difference, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks for calling in. All right, yeah, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I know I've said this many times, but there's a difference between how much training you can tolerate and how much training, you know, what the appropriate, most effective amount of training is, right? Yeah. Those are two different things. You can almost always tolerate more training than what is considered optimal. And once you go outside of optimal, whether you go below or above optimal, <laughs> You're getting, you're slowing down your progress. You're not going to get as many gains. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so, and what we tend to do, especially when we're very experienced and we're training for a long time and we love the process, is we tend to all inch towards what we can tolerate. Oh, I can do more. Oh, it's not affecting me negatively. Oh, I can do more. Oh, it's not. But without realizing that you're actually reducing your body's ability to, you know, build muscle and improve. So that's that's the part well, that I because most on. instances you you provide more work. A lot of times you get a lot more benefit that way. Yeah. So this is why this is a little bit of a challenge mentally uh, to to scale and find that that sweet spot where you're actually going to move forward. I think that's great advice because he's he's at that age when this is. Most likely, right? I remember, I remember being ten years deep into training and stuff, and like that was in the heart of yeah. More is more, more is better, mm -hmm. more intense is better, and you can handle a lot when you yeah. Do it, and so. it, it was right around, it was maybe a little bit before twenty eight, so I was probably like twenty six uh, when I did that. Like, cut. I never my literally from seventeen when I started lifting to probably twenty six, so nine years or so, nine ten years. Um, seven days a week, yeah. you know, and a bad week. And only if I did five, it was because I couldn't get to it or I was doing something like snowboarding or wakeboarding, something else on that day. So I was so active and thinking that the more effort, more work I put in, the more muscle I would get. And I remember like, I can't remember what's, what it was that I read. And it was like, I backed off to three days a week and it was hard. I remember thinking like, oh, this isn't working like yeah. right away. Cause you're not, you're not pumped up. You're not up. getting the pump every yeah, day. You're not getting pumped every day. So you're like, oh, I'm shrinking. I'm going to get bad. I'm like, no, I'm going to stay the course, trust the process for like a month. And it was pretty quick after about a month or so, I noticed strength. And that's what really started me. Oh, let me hang here for that. I remember hitting like dumbbell bench press, bigger numbers than I'd ever yeah, hit within before. a couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so I was like, okay, let me, let me stick this out for a little bit. So he's probably right in that age where it's he's yeah. still at that. Well, I want to do more. My story is a little different in that I read uh, Mike Mentzer's heavy duty book. Dorian Yates was the reigning Mister Olympia. He talked about overtraining all the time, and so I went high volume and I brought the volume way down and the frequency down, and I saw great gains. I still, still would consistently inch towards that, doing as much as I could tolerate. That's how insidious that tendency is. So. 
check it. And here's the, okay. Always do this. What, this is what helps me out. I always ask myself, what's the worst that could happen. Right? So I'll cut down. I just recently did this. So I, I cut down my volume. I said, right, what's the worst that could happen after a few weeks? I notice it's not working. I go back to what I was doing before and I'll bounce back real quick. So let me give it a few weeks and uh, you know, like clockwork, uh, less work work better for me. So yeah. it's very insidious. So consider that if you're in a you, similar situation, you know, something I didn't tell him to do that I did, um, that I remember I was a lot of my peers were kind of criticizing and I thought it was it, they interesting that they thought this would they were they encouraged me to like get on stage right away like oh and I get why because they're like get the nerves out see what it's like just who cares what you look like yeah. just do the next show you can get on to and I didn't I wanted to win like so I was like I'm not ready you know I need to prepare so I spent a year of practicing cutting for a show before I cut for my first show because a lot of uh, competing is timing. It's learning learning how to manage your calories and your 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 burn and intake, and then how to manipulate that to get your body to peak on a day. It's a lot more than you think it is. Oh, like, it's weird. Like you get when you it's you know what it is. It's when you get really lean. You know when you're like ten percent, nine percent, you look good at the beach. You know, holding a couple pounds of water, whether or not your muscles have glycogen or not, eh, you can tell, but not really. You're down to three percent body fat on stage. A little bit of water, a little bit of a lack of fullness in your muscles, you look like a different person. And you'll see people the day before, the day after, look way better because they missed their timing. Oh, I, I mean, so that's, I mean, what you're saying is like so on point. I think people have no idea. They don't realize that when you compete, it's not just about all the basics. You got to know all that stuff, but it's like, how do I time this? And not just for the day, by the way. Literally for the morning when I'm doing the prejudging or yeah. when I'm doing it's it's so. I insane. mean, I I practiced for a year and then I went and did six shows over the course of two years, and I tell people that I don't think I ever brought my best physique to stage. Mm. I always looked better the day before, the day after, the night of. I just it's hard. It's really hard to and if you're constantly building and you're manipulating, and changing things, yeah. it's very inconsistent, and so it's tough to peak. Um, right at that time when you're supposed to. So I encourage somebody who's thinking about competing to do a dry run when you don't have to get on stage with that and just say, hey, I'm going to yeah. try and get the leanest I've ever got. I'm going to try and get my physique and pick a date and say, I'm going to try and get perfectly shredded at this time and see what happens. And what you'll find is I bet you two days before or two days after or the day before or after you find that your physique ends up looking better and you learn a lot about how your body responds to all those little subtle things you're talking about. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.